Hello everyone, I'm Rodney for 3GameMan.com and today's Q&A video is really a rehash of a video review that I did on the Thikas N5810 NAS, but in this video it will just be on the installation of the drives, setup of the unit, and more on the operating system. So that's it. If you want to watch the video review, I will link you up above. And by the way, if you think this video and other videos that I produce are great, like them, subscribe to the channel, remember to share, and if you have a question, for me please go ahead and post it and I'll get to it as soon as I can and your comments are always welcome. Installing drives in this is really easy. First remove the drive tray then mount the drive to the tray and slide it back in. Then of course you can choose to secure the drive. Once the drives are installed and you've made all the appropriate connections, turn the unit on and it is really easy to set up, especially if you use the setup wizard. Go ahead and run it. It will find the NAS, click on it, go next, enter the admin ID and password, which by the way is admin and admin, make all the appropriate network configuration settings, go next, and after that enter a new password, say OK, and then open the browser. Now we're entering the username and password, and then you'll need to create the RAID array by first selecting the drives. And now this is going to depend upon how many drives that you have when it comes to the different RAID array. But for me, I'm going to select RAID 0 and click Next. And then you've got a bunch of options. Choose the ones that you want, name it, and then create the array. This will take some time and once it's finished, it will confirm it. Okay, so let's go through the operating system. This is just the desktop and you could create all kinds of shortcuts here. At the top, they've got a few items for quick access. At the top left is the control panel. I'll come back to that. These are the apps and I'll come back to that as well. This is the file center for all the different folders and whatnot, different messages as well. You've got our quick resource monitor and you can choose to you know, change the language, change the password as well. You can change the display password or you could just log off. So let's go back here to the control panel. I'll go through these really quickly. So you've got the log and notification, system log, access log, log settings, and notifications. And you can choose to email notifications to you if you want. Power and hardware, you've got power management. You can set up all kinds of different power options, power schedule, wake on LAN, UPS, and hardware control, like buzzers and whatnot. Within system information, you have the system, network, service status, and hardware information. We've got a whole bunch of network settings regional option, date and time. You have an external drive on this if you want to, or a printer. Within monitor, you can monitor the CPU, memory, drive and network activity. You can also choose to update the firmware and this is pretty neat. You can actually check if you want to and have it you know, update automatically. You can also reset everything if need be. Within privilege, you've got shared folders. You've got the local account, user group, user quota, and backup and restore, active directory, as well as lightweight directory access protocol. Within storage, these are all your storage options. For me, you know, I chose to go with RAID 0 configuration, which is not great when it comes to, you know, redundancy. And if something was to fail, I went for speed and basically capacity. But you can choose, you know, which RAID setup that you would prefer. iSCSI, ISO mount, and other options, including the disk clone wipe. Within services, got the different file services here like Samba, FTP, and so on. You got the web service, you got the SSH service, iTunes, SNMP service, VPN service. Just go through the different options here so you can see.
and the UPNP or the Universal Plug and Play. Scroll down to backup, do the local backup, remote backup, R Sync services, you can do a USB copy. And also you can do a system failover. Okay, so these shortcuts are already on the desktop, but you can choose to remove them or you can add some of your own. Let's just say I want to add the local account shortcut. No problem, I can do that. Or I can go ahead and remove it. Now let's go into all of the apps. All the apps, and there's lots of them. Google Drive, for example. Let's go ahead and install that. Plex and also XBMC. And note when they're installing, it does give you an indication of the progress. Now I'm going to use Plex here as an example, but of course you could use XBMC or Kodi if you prefer, you know, connect an HDMI cable right from the unit into the TV and bam, you're watching your favorite movie. But for server reasons, I'm going to go with Plex here. This is a smart TV. It's connected into the network. It has found the Plex server. So once I go in there and find the content, I can go ahead and play it as simple as that. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you like this video, thumb it up, subscribe, share. Your comments are always welcome. And if you have a question for me, post it and I'll get to it as soon as I can.